Hey guys and welcome to another video in this new tutorial series for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and the Airbus A320neo. So if you've not yet checked out the rest of the tutorial series prior to this one please do go back and uh, have a look through those so you know where we are in uh, the stage of our flight. Today's video we're looking at the actual departure and how we handle that in uh, the Airbus A320. So if you saw the video prior to this you'll see us uh, prepping the taxi and doing our quick departure briefing. We're now effectively lined up for takeoff here at Gatwick on runway 26 left. We've been given ATC clearance from the tower and we're all set to enter the active runway area. Following departure, we fly a runway heading uh, with no turns below 710 feet, as is shown to us on the Jefferson charts, if you're lucky enough to have a Navigraph subscription. Other than that, we basically climb straight out on runway heading to a maximum altitude of 4,000 feet. That's all set up in our flight control unit just here. So, let's go ahead and line up on... Uh, on the active runway shall we so our strobe lights are on the landing lights are on and we're all set for our flex temp takeoff so obviously when we enter the active runway we want to try and line up nice and level with that center line Air traffic control as well would normally give you uh, the winds, so if you have got any strong winds coming from one direction or the other, so it's a bit of a crosswind takeoff, you know what to expect. Mm, uh, I need to pop a little bit of rudder control in there to try and maintain that center line on takeoff. Okay, so we can hold that there. All right, so let's just briefly talk about what's going to happen as we take off. So we'll announce the takeoff, we'll start the chrono, we'll release the brakes, the thrust levers will slowly advance to around 50% N1, which is actually more difficult than it sounds here in the flight sim. So around 50% N1, and that's just to make sure that one engine isn't accelerating more than the other. After that, we continue to push the thrust levers forward until they reach the flex detent up here again more difficult to see uh, in a flight simulator because in the real world you can obviously be looking down but here in the flight simulator we want to be looking straight ahead if you're lucky enough to have VR that might be a little bit easier for you once flex temp is set keep directional control using the rudder announce the speeds as we're passing them and um, we need to make sure that obviously our thrust set and make sure our engine instruments are giving a, uh, an accurate reading. As we're rolling down the runway, we want to put half the, about a half side stick forward, so not all the way, so about half side stick forward until 80 knots. Once we get to 80 knots, we're going to slowly bring that back so that by 100 knots, we are uh, resting even. And uh, after that, we're just using our left and right rudder to keep it on the center line till passing V1. Once we get that, we pull back at VR at, and then make sure we've got a positive rate of climb. Confirm that, retract the landing gear and then we can pop the autopilot on <coughs> as required. We will then get thrust reduction flashing up here about a thousand feet off the uh, ground. So here at Gavi that's going to be about 1,000 200 feet. Once the thrust levers are back into the climb detent, we turn back on both packs one and two. In the real world, you leave about 10 seconds between popping pack one and pack two back on. That's just to prevent a surge. Now, that depending on what is happening outside the window and how you're currently flying your departure, that's easier in the real world than it is the simulator because yet again you don't really want to be concentrating up here on what's happening on the screen you want to be concentrating on what's happening out here and down here so if you want to just quickly click one to the other then uh, I'm sure no everyone would forgive you for doing that but in the real world you want to leave about 10 seconds between um, 
between the two. Once we've then passed F speed, we want to make sure that the flaps are retracted, so flap zero. Once flaps are retracted, we then also want to disarm the ground spoilers. Okay, so all that is going to happen rather quickly. We've briefed you on uh, how that's going to work. So, we can now announce takeoff, start the chrono, advance our thrust to around 50% N1. And pushing forward on the side stick and advance the thrust levers up to flex temp. So man flex, SRS and runway is showing down here. 80 knots, pulling back on the side stick to 100 knots. And there's V1 and rotate. And we're looking to rotate up to about 15 degrees. So we can hold that there. Positive rate of climb, gear up. So we're just waiting about 1,200 feet. We'll get climb thrust. Set that. With that, the packs can now come back on. And as I say, it should be 10 seconds between the two. But here in the server, I'm just going to quickly flick those. Can lower the nose back down to 10 degrees. And we're just watching for a positive speed trend of this going up. There was one thing I did incorrect there actually. Once you get the climb thrust uh, announced, you should then lower the nose to 10 degrees as we've done now and then you should set climb thrust. So that's me being naughty and just getting those two, uh, those two the wrong way around. We want to make sure we don't climb any higher than 4,000 feet. That is our stop altitude. So we can now begin to lower that nose. Make sure we don't climb past 4,000 feet here at Gatwick. We've passed S speed, so flaps zero. And the spoilers can now be disarmed, and we can pop autopilot one engage. The autopilot should now follow the flight directors as it is doing, and it's rolled back the engine as well to make sure we stop at 250 knots below 10,000 feet. So at this point air traffic control might tell us to continue our climb to flight level 120. So let's select flight level 120. Let's push to engage that. We're climbing above the transition altitude, so we now need to set standard pressure for that climb. And the aircraft will now continue to climb away. Keep an eye on the climb rate. It's climbing at 2,600 feet per minute, 2,700. It will quite happily climb up to maybe 4,000 feet per minute and there's nothing wrong with that. That is well within the capabilities of the uh, Airbus A320. We're now away from the ground of course, so we can turn the ground radar off and that just brings our weather radar back on. I find it always useful as well, particularly the way my thrust levers work, just to come down here and check that you have got those exactly in that climb detent, which we have, so that's fine. That's just a gross check that I do when I'm flying. So we're coming away quite happily, climbing at a decent rate. Again, this isn't too excessive, quite happy to take 4,000 feet per minute, 4,400 feet per minute. We're now approaching 10,000 feet so we can turn all the landing lights off 
etc. We can ding the cabin crew and release those. The way to do that will be to click the seatbelt sign twice, just ding that on and off. We can leave our anti-ice on for the time being, as we've still got some clouds to, uh, to fly through. Passing 10,000 feet then, up to you whether you turn the seatbelt signs off for the passengers. We now want to put airport on to the EFIS. We then want to come down and check, make sure that there's nothing showing on the, uh, the ECAM. All is good there. We then also want to check, let's just clear the GPS primary from the scratch pad. We then also want to check our progress page. And it's just telling us that our optimum flight level for the aircraft, as it is uh, balanced at the moment, is flight level 390. And that will also be the maximum for the aircraft. And we're currently set to cruise at the minute to flight level 370. That's what's uh, in the flight computer. So that's all fine. Obviously we want to make sure that you're not exceeding your optimum or recommended maximum. So we now reach flight level 120. We could go ahead and continue to climb to flight level 370. So we just engage that and the autopilot will take care of that all on its own. So when do we turn the anti-ice off? I wouldn't do it just yet because we've still got this cloud to go through. However, when the saturated air temperature, which is this number down here, SAT, reaches minus 40, that's 40 degrees, you can turn that off. Anything below minus 40 degrees, you don't need the anti-ice on. Once the aircraft has reached its cruising altitude then, I'm going to jump the gun a little bit here just for the purposes of this uh, tutorial. Once we've reached cruising altitude, all we're doing until we get to cruising altitude is essentially making sure that the aircraft is flying as you would expect it to. That it's following the flight plan, it's climbing as it should, autopilot isn't doing anything daft or anything like that. Once we're at flight level 370 or whatever your cruising altitude is, we can just turn the seatbelt signs off uh, there now. Then there's a few other things that we want to do. So you want to again check your ECAM memo, make sure there is uh, no warnings or anything like that flashed up. After that, what you would do is just cycle through your SD pages, uh, which show here on the lower ECAM. So basically we check that there's nothing wrong with any of the engine systems, they're all working fine. The bleed air is coming through, that's fine. Our uh, cabin pressure is all okay. Now, unfortunately, I'm cycling through these just because this is what you do in the real world, but a lot of these pages aren't accurately modelled just yet. But it's a good habit to get into because I'm sure one day they will. For instance, I've just selected the, uh, the electric page on the ECAM. It tells me battery 1 is off, the APU is on, and generator 2 is off. Well, none of those are true, as you can see from looking at the overhead panel. Um, hydraulics aren't actually modelled yet. The fuel page is pretty good. That's, uh, that is modelled quite accurately. APU, that's confirmation of the APU, is no longer running. This gives you the temperature of the cabin. And I'll just show you that this ECAM does actually work. So, what did I say? In the cockpit, it is 23 degrees. If I went and turned up the temperature for that one and maybe turned down the back cabin. Let's come down here. So you'll see the cockpit is slowly starting to increase and the aft cabin would start to decrease. I'm not quite sure how quickly that happens um, but I I have played with those and this does work so that's quite neat that that, that is modelled. Uh, door and windows obviously you want all green there by this stage. We'd also check the uh, wheel temperatures make sure that nothing excessive has happened on the departure and our flight control is obviously being controlled now by the uh, Airbus's computers so make sure the ELAC SEC computers are, uh, are all turned on. We can then leave the aircraft uh, showing the engine information on the account for the remainder of the flight. The next thing we do there is check our flight progress. So on the operational uh, flight plan, 
you've obviously got your uh, your chrono has been started down here so we're probably nine minutes and about 30 seconds into the flight and we're just passing the southampton sierra alpha mike vor and now heading towards uh, ibnid so you just check that uh, you're on time and the fuel on board matches or is above the minimum fuel uh, amount remaining at this particular waypoint and that's all explained to you in the Simreef tutorial which is a, uh, a couple of videos back in this tutorial series. One of the other things then we'd want to be doing and this is for the entire duration of uh, the cruise would be to get en route weathers. We can also obviously make sure that our standby instrument is now set to uh, standard pressure but you'd want to get en route weathers so in the event of an emergency you want to have good situational awareness of where you are in the world and where your closest airports are should you wish to divert so obviously at the moment we're probably still close enough to Gatwick should anything go wrong we've just flown over Southampton for example where we could also take the aircraft if um, if needed and of course many of you will know how to do this now you go down to the McDill menu Atsu AOC menu and weather request now these are populated automatically so there's Gatwick there's our arrival at Faro these aren't populated automatically in the real aircraft you would have to type these in because um, as we get further and further away from Gatwick of course we wouldn't be interested in the weather for Gatwick but we're stuck with these for the time being unless anything gets reprogrammed so we could type in um, the weather for Southampton as we have just passed that and uh, we could maybe type in uh, the weather for Paris as well basically you'd look at which airport should be flying on um, or flying over or near on your route I'm just giving a couple of examples there uh, so Lima Fox uh, um, mine's gone blank I can't actually remember the uh, the Paris code at the minute but never mind you get the idea so you can pop those in hit send and you'll get a company message flash up just here in a, uh, a couple of minutes with those and there we are that's it that's what we'll be doing at our cruise level obviously we're not at our cruise level yet and I've just uh, jumped ahead with those for the sake of the tutorial one of the other things I would like to quickly mention is that you can see we've got airport now turned on the uh, navigation display so if I just zoom out a little bit uh, we'll see those populating just here in the real aircraft what you tend to get is only airports that the Airbus A320 could actually land at physically land at would be then shown on the navigation display in flight in 2020 at the moment every single airport that is within this range will be displayed so this is smaller airports grass strips uh, or everything obviously grass strip airports are no use to us but it's just worth noting that you can't land at every airport that you see on here whereas the real airbus would normally only show you uh, airports that you uh, were capable at landing at so that weather has just come through back to the AOC menu messages received and there's the meta as it is for uh, the airports that we selected funnily enough Southampton was not available for some reason but anyway all right guys so I hope you enjoyed this part of the uh, tutorial the next part coming soon will be the arrival briefing and how we're going to program all that in and make sure everything is looking set for our descent and arrival into uh, into Faro. I, I look forward to seeing you for that. Please hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be uh, notified of new content and of course the live streams that we do throughout the week. Any questions in this video leave a comment for me and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks very much for watching hope that's been useful bye bye for now.